He also has this crazy moment where he's like, look, there's a lot of people who will say that God is angry. Don't read his book. But if just, <laughs> I'm telling you, God's too big. Like, too big. <laughs> like, you can't even fit it in your mouth. That's how big God is. <laughs> This is why I write literally my complaints. Down. This is why I run them by my wife. <laughs> God wants your face. Off. <laughs> he just starts doing movie quotes. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because of you. It's your fault. All your fault. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you, Noah. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? So bored. <laughs> <laughs> so bored. This was rough. Boring yeah, this, movie. This movie had the exact opposite uh, effect on my blood pressure from the movie from last week. Uh, <laughs> so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Confessions of a Prodigal Son. It's about how religion has better morals than atheism. Mm -hmm. For example, in Christianity, you can do literally anything you want as long as you ask for God's forgiveness when you're done. Just like that story from Luke 15 about the prodigal son which they stole badly and turned into a 90-minute movie. Whew. And Eli, how bad was this 90-minute movie? Well, if you love The Diary of Anne Frank, but you wished that it had been about that couple everybody in high school knew should have broken up way before they did, then you <laughs> will love this movie. This is just a series of nonsense diary entries punctuated by the worst teacher in the universe and couples who should not be together having boring fights that you wish you weren't watching. Oh, it, it, it was it was almost exactly conversations I want out of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that happened in this movie was just one of those things where you are just like you're saying to the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just uh, they, we well, needed a bunch of scenes in this crazy billionaire remake to make this perfectly the conversations you don't want to have movie you just have a bunch of scenes with a racist aunt where she sits down and she's like obama's a muslim you see this <laughs> look at this picture yeah he's just participating in their ceremony mm, because he is one they're sheiks yeah he looks great in a suit that's not the point he's a muslim <laughs> now, I, I feel like we need to address this one right away, too. If you came to this movie expecting to stroke it to Kevin Sorbo's aged but still flawless pectoral protrusions, you best be quick about it. Because I believe that these filmmakers secured exactly 9 minutes and 11 seconds with K Sorbs. They really fucking did. If you told me that this movie had been filmed, like, they were like, huh, we're just doing some stock footage. Do you mind being a part of it? And he was like, why not? And they were like, doesn't matter what you say. Don't worry about it. We're just doing some dinner table <laughs> shots. This isn't for a Christian movie. We know how much <laughs> that would cost us. Shut up, Brian. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You give it away too much. Now, it, but that brought up the interesting question because I realized that I'd basically been tricked into watching a movie because Kevin Sorbo was in it. Like, did you ever <laughs> think you would sink that low? I mean, it's like if the Nazis had told the Jews, no, no, those are electric chairs. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's no chairs in here at all. <laughs> Good, the showers are starting. I'm going to complain afterwards. If these towels are scratchy. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now that we've got the prerequisite Holocaust joke out of the way, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, I'm going to say best worst being meta by accident. So again, <laughs> th they stole the story of the prodigal son from the Bible to make this movie. And then the main character in the movie steals the story badly for his English class and basically <laughs> plagiarizes it. Right. Ridiculous. I've never seen a movie say, you know, it's like this is a movie so much before. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Eli, any Can we go with, I, I got a couple. Can we go with uh, least well-handled daddy issues? I mean, honestly, if the closing <laughs> montage, she had just staple gunned a picture of his dad to her face on their wedding night, it would be slightly <laughs> less creepy. This character is, ex this female lead is explicit. She's just like, well, you know, my dad left and God's like a dad, so... I'm doubling down. I'm doubling the fuck down. Well, I don't know if the, I'm doubling the fuck 
down. <laughs> also, I want to nominate this for least acknowledged stalking. Oh, hell yeah. One of these characters continually stalks the other one and everyone's like, she's mad at you right now. Not like, hey man, don't do that. Yeah, right. There's, we have restraining orders for shit like this. Um, I also wanted to throw out a nomination too here. In, capturing inane details. I mean, I know you're trying to get to 90 minutes, but I was sure that at some point in this movie, we we're going to watch this kid like trim his toenails or something. Oh, uh, he goes to the ATM three times in the movie and at no <laughs> point does it matter. You think that like, oh, he's going to go to the ATM and run out of money. That's going right. to be right. That's why we see. Nope. He just goes to the ATM. Enters his PIN number, retrieves cash, and goes about his business thrice throughout this film. Thrice. <laughs> As though we would be sitting there going, wait, now how does he have more cash? And he, <laughs> he would have had to start this movie with $900 in his pocket. Yeah. But I think that was part of one of the many times in this movie where it was looking at us winking and going, you see how prodigal he is? We know what that word means. We know. <laughs> Anyway, well, the quicker we get this one started, the quicker we'll get it done. So we're going to pause for the quickest of breaks. And when we come back, we'll endure all the self-pitying angst that is confessions of a prodigal son. Trump 2016. <laughs> <laughs> so many of you pointed out that on last week's episode for a number of our listeners, there was a Donald Trump for president ad preceding the show. And to be honest... <laughs> There may have been one at the beginning of this show, too. I'm not sure yet. Now, we've got to admit that when we first heard that Trump ads were on our show, our impulse was to go the way of many of our podcasting friends and tell them to go fuck themselves. But then it occurred to us, you know, if Donald Trump wants to waste his money supporting a show by babbling at listeners who wouldn't vote for him if he was attached to the on switch on their oxygen mask, why not let him? I, I mean, after all, it feels good to know that we've squeezed more money out of that stingy asshole over the last 20 years than the IRS or that architect do that hillary likes to trot around <laughs> now of course that being said if you're super offended we can have those ads pulled but before you reach out to us i feel like we should at least tell you a few of the things we plan on spending trump's money on for example gifts for a gay wedding membership cards at tito's taco trucks now on every corner starting <laughs> november 2016 not a gun condoms for premarital sex or as mike pence calls them Future baby shields. Our taxes. The Hillary Clinton campaign. <laughs> the United Negro College Fund. Hush money for all the pussy we grab at QED. <laughs> we talked about this. <laughs> it's too late. So, it's on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> so if you hear an ad for Donald Trump on this or any of our other shows, just remember, you just took Donald Trump's dollar and handed it to us. Paid for by Donald Trump. Hey, Sorbs. Thanks so much for coming in, bro. Uh, no problem, guys. What's up? Oh, well, you know, we've got this movie coming out. It's called Confessions of a Prodigal Son. We film in July, and we think you'd be amazing as the dad. Yeah, totally. Perfect. Oh, g guys, I I'd love to, but I'm, I'm actually shooting a different movie in July. I, I can't take the uh, project. Oh, really? Yeah, so sorry, guys. I I'm sure we'll get to work together at some point, but... Uh, mm. Mm. Okay, um... Hold on, uh, do you get a lunch break at that project? Sorry, what, one? Yeah, 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 we could just shoot on your lunch break. No big deal. We will come to you. Yeah. Guys, that's, that's going to be like 20 minutes a day. I don't think you want to All right, shoot sounds like, awesome. This yeah, will be perfect. No, no, we, lunch can, we can definitely work with that. We'll even have you eaten in the scene. S seriously? Yep. Serious is a heart attack. Very excited. Okay, uh, how much does it pay? Uh, $11.16. I guess I'm in. Will you take a check? No, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And just in case you were in danger of thinking this movie was going to be well made, it is literally going to start out with the same end result you would get if two friends were fighting over a camera with the lens cap still on and one of them pushed record. Yeah. <laughs> Zero seconds into the movie and the picture Netflix used to get me to watch is higher quality than the film. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it went all out HD camera for that picture. <laughs> also, little little note, because I do I do love the production companies. What would you what should we name our film company? Lighting Dark? Killed it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Wow. I hope they come out with more. Okay. So we start off with basically, 
I mean, I think at this point we've started with something like 712 car crash scenes in the 60 movies we've reviewed. Mm-hmm. I feel like this might have been the worst. I don't know. Maybe that uh, maybe that uh, anti-gay Ray Comfort movie had a worse one. But this definitely competes for the crappiest car crash open we've ever seen. Yeah, well, someone needs to make us a supercut. Listen to me. If you're out there, I want you to make us a supercut of all the terrible car caches we reviewed. And then at the year end wrap up show, we will decide which car crash was the worst. <laughs> yeah, the god awful movie awards here. Yeah. So, and, and this is where we're going to start. And this is never going to stop. We're going to start this mopey, just broken up with 10th grader voiceover. Dear diary. Conveniently, my parents had a giant picture of the prodigal son. Damn, it's a good thing they didn't have Cain and Abel or I would have murdered the fuck out of my brother. (laughs) Also, apparently none of us read that story because this movie is not what that story is (laughs) about. It's so fucking stupid. This is how ham-fisted this story is going to be. In the opening line of the movie that's supposed to be a retelling of the prodigal son The kid starts talking about a picture from the prodigal son story in the Bible that was hanging up in his house. (laughs) Minute one. This is the movie version of a nine-year-old explaining a knock-knock joke for 90 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Because orange sounds like aren't you. I get it. I get it. Literally anything. If I vaccinate you, will you stop wanting to talk to me? (laughs) Call back. We had a painting that said spoiler alert on it never understood that (laughs) anyway i'm gonna run away from home and be an atheist now cool yeah yeah holy shit yeah so a gangly albino is leaving his home in a nissan now and this is where we see case orbs he's sad but he's just too tough to show it and they're playing this like this is the big running away moment we will learn later that this kid is an adult going to college but Nothing. He just gets in a car. It's not like they drive over Jesus's face as they leave. It's just nice sunny day. Gets in a car. Yeah. Well. Yeah. What's weird is the meta story of this is his parents give him the money for college and some spending money. If he can make it two years on his own, he's allowed to stay gone as a full grown yeah, adult. What? What? <laughs> what is that deal? What? What, what were the stakes here? Well, if I spend all my money, crash my car, get kicked out of school, and rape the only girl I've ever loved, I'll just go home and be an usher in my dad's church. Sounds pretty fucking sweet to me. (laughs) Yeah, and those are the stakes of this goddamn movie. This movie is such a bunch of, like, navel-gazing, self-pitying bullshit from a person with zero problems. I said, like, early on, I'm like, if the kid who starred in this movie did not also write and produce this movie, I will eat my own skin. Skin. <laughs> <laughs> it's true and we should speak about sean sean looks like voldemort's awkward teenage years like before he magicked his head bald and got rid of the nose this is just like 50 percent there he looks like he got a meal for every emotion he's capable of expressing <laughs> he looks like he got a call back for train spotting and never stops talking about it I'm just like uh, i don't know if you heard this but in 1990 you got a call back yeah. for train spotting i don't know <laughs> And also we get the, uh, the, the, the fact that they don't have a whole lot of case orbs very early. I noticed this right away in the opening scene as case orbs is like kind of sadly walking back into the house after his son has left. He, he, the, the camera cuts to like super slow motion. They're like extra seconds with case orbs all <laughs> extra <laughs> seconds. And now we cut to, uh, th- that's the opening and we cut to our, our, our character waking up to his alarm clock and doing waking up stuff. Like, you know, we watch him. Brush his teeth and and shave and smell one shirt, but decide on another. Like just these mundane, inane. Put the egos in the toaster. <laughs> Walk, take the egos out of the toaster. Damn, that's too hot. Why is it always so hot when it comes out of the toaster? Do I have a clean fork? I could wash a fork. <laughs> nah. <laughs> this movie. <laughs> yeah, right. From start to finish. Um, but so, okay, and, but he's waking up late, apparently. They show him, like, running to class. And I, I just I, this, I had this little moment where he's running, and there's a handrail next to the door he's running towards. I'm like, parkour that handrail, bitch. <laughs> I deserve this. Also, uh, fuck off. He's at college? Yes. Like, they made it sound like he ran away to a crack house or something. <laughs> if, it, if running away from home equals college, you should run away. What are they yeah. talking about? Yeah, I didn't realize I was a runaway, too. Yeah, this country's got a huge runaway problem, guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
I guess the only problem, the only reason I'm not a prodigal son is that I didn't move back into my parents' house afterwards. <laughs> well, wait, did you did they they gave you all the money and then if you made it two years, you're free, right? They well, gave you clothes like a house elf and then you get to go. <laughs> no, they drove a, an owl through my ear by the door jam. It's a whole thing. It's <laughs> okay, a big I get thing. It, yeah. Um, so and now the the main point of this scene, other than you know he just doesn't have his shit together because he's not Christian enough, so he's late to college, is that we have to meet Professor Truman, the tough some bitch professor at the center of this movie. <laughs> yeah, he, I wrote in my notes. He goes to class and meets the substitute teacher character from Key and Peele. <laughs> 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 Literally, he's like. I'm not your friend. I'm not here. You will fail this class. And I keep writing in my notes, hey, LeVar Burton, no good teachers do this. This is not a good thing. I know you stole your monologue from Peter Bogosian's Twitter, but I need you to take it down a notch. You're going to do the fucking steers and queers monologue. And uh, a couple of things about how colleges work. The people who made this movie have never seen a college. First of all, they suggest that this is a... Just for sophomores English class. That's what? not generally how college classes work, as I understand it. Um, he also <laughs> says, like, like you mentioned before, many of these students are going to fail my class. Like, really? Can, can you do that? Like, what does that bell curve look like? You can't just <laughs> fail most of your class. And, uh, also, he, he makes it sound like it, this is going to be like the men from the boys, but like sophomore English <laughs> yeah, that's the- is supposed to be the Wheaton chaff moment at this college. <laughs> What? <laughs> and and not just that, but like the only assignment we ever hear about in this class is tell your story and what it means. And he's like, not all of you will make it out of here alive. Write <laughs> right what you feel. Damn. I wanted a whiplash moment where he's like, not quite my emotion. Try to get, he throws a chair at the kid's head. I said, right from your heart, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it, if, of all the fucking classes to have this, I mean, if he was a philosophy professor, it would make sense. But yeah, this is a little much for fucking sophomore English. Um, So, okay, so we meet Professor Truman. Now, of course, Sean, the main character, he's come in late and kind of trying to sneak in. But Professor Truman isn't having any of that shit. So he literally says, who do you think you are? Right. That's literally his reaction. And I wrote, um, getting you fired? Like you're not just, <laughs> try not to be late next time. <laughs> yeah. It's the first fucking day of class. Everyone's late the first day because you got to find your way into a new insane building named after Jews that aren't alive anymore. <laughs> Everyone knows this. Right, exactly. And everything's numerically by alphabet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so he like, um, you know, has a bad time with his professor on day one and then he comes to try to like make amends after class. But Professor Truman isn't having any of that shit. And I love to, and this isn't the last time this is going to happen where the guy's like, um, you know, you know, somebody says of this character, you know, you're incredibly charming and good looking, but that won't be enough for me. It's like, no, he's really, he's neither. He just wrote those lines. For you to say about <laughs> yeah. him. Several characters throughout this movie will be like, you're pretty charming. And then he's like, Dirk! and you're like, wow, really? I don't. <laughs> what character were they supposed to say these lines about? What did it say instead of Dirk in the first draft? <laughs> this is a script, guys. And also, the, kind of a minor point, but doesn't one usually have books and pencils and whatnot when one walks in and out of a college class? He goes in and out, doesn't even have a fucking bag. Like, yeah, you guys aren't even trying. <laughs> he just shows up naked. <laughs> Ready to learn. I'm open. <laughs> How's that for a blank slate? <laughs> Shit, is this not a nightmare? I was fucking convinced this was a nightmare. <laughs> I'm not Damn hurting it. anybody. So, <laughs> tends to work as an excuse, as I understand it. So now we have to meet Cameron, who looks like he's going method on a community theater performance of Grease. Oh, I said stay oh. gayed in, Pony Boy. <laughs> <laughs> looks like you should be tweeting at me about why Milo Yiannopoulos is funny. <laughs> oh, this character is fucking awful. And and I'm I'm they don't come right out and say that the fact that he's dating a black girl ma- makes him a, a hedonistic heathen. But they seem to imply it. Was that just me? Oh, no. no. They're, they're being anti-biblical here. This is starting it right off with the higher education and the race mixing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> also, and, and this will go throughout, but it makes the whole movie make a lot more sense. 
Cameron the first day was told, hey, Cameron, you're the comic relief. And everyone else on set was told, hey, Cameron's the villain because Cameron <laughs> does wacky comic relief stuff. And everyone's like, fuck you, man. Fuck <laughs> you. And that will be his performance throughout. He'll be like, uh oh, I slipped on a banana peel. And they'll be like, seriously? That little girl had cancer. And you're just like, what are people <laughs> saying? Is this whole movie scripted by Google Translate? <laughs> The emotions never match the words in this fucking movie. Not at any one point, no. Um, so, yeah, so now I guess Cameron is Sean's buddy, so they're meeting up after class so they can commiserate. But first he has to try to, like, fuck this black chick. So he's like, hey, we're going to have a big party. And I guess we're supposed to look at it and go and, like, partying and drinking and inviting black girls, those fallen little angels. Seriously, she's a Canaanite. Can you not see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sh she basically responds with, okay, but will there be alcohol in danger? And he's like, totally. We're going to make poor life choices. And she's like, all right, I'll regret this in 10 years. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take my number. And everyone in the audience is supposed to be like handing out your number. Yeah, right. <laughs> you give him your father's number. <laughs> Wearing those short shorts. And your weight in silver. <laughs> <laughs> Two cows. Um, so, and, and then they run into James from Bible Youth Group back home. <laughs> yep. Who, who is played by Michael Bolton. <laughs> not, not the singer, but definitely no talent ass clown. Horrible. <laughs> and here's the thing. James is very clearly supposed to be a good guy in this movie, but the characters hate him and there's never a day new mall. So he just keeps going up to people being like, Hey, you should check out Bible Club. And everyone's like, shut the fuck up, James. And he's like, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, are, when are we shooting that scene where everyone's like, James is awesome. Also, <laughs> why did we use my real name? Like everyone else got a character. <laughs> So James is trying to get them to like come to Bible club and they're like gross and a hot girl walks by and they stop paying attention to James's swollen butthole of a mouth to look at her and he goes, come on guys, bounce the eyes, bounce the eyes. What? And I thought he was just having a stroke, but I Googled it and bounce the eyes is actually, I've looked it up. And there's a whole thing on the internet about it. It comes from a book for Christian teens called Every Man's Battle by Fred Stoker. And oh. basically what Stoker tells kids is like, look, you're naturally inclined to want to look at boobs and tits and, and, and legs and, and pussies and stuff. But you got to learn to <laughs> bounce your eyes. The moment you feel your eyes touch a girl, they bounce away to something else. <laughs> <laughs> wow. oh, That's a whole thing. I want to read that book so bad now. That's Every man's amazing. battle. Bounce your hands, Donald. Bounce your hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So yeah, so the hot chick walks by. They blow off the living wedgie or whatever, um, and and then we get them walking down Hobo Alley like bad kids do, and 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 they come across a homeless guy. Now this is so weird. Okay, so. This whole movie is supposed to be about this kid like being a bad kid and then learning to be good. But one of the first things we see him do is give a homeless guy 40 bucks because he's just a nice guy. Right. <laughs> but that never comes back. Nope. I mean, it kind of comes back, but it never matters in the movie. Also, they go so far out of their way to make sure we know it's a homeless guy. Like, you don't have to give him jeans that were attacked by a shark. Like, we get that he's a homeless guy. He's sitting there. He's got come a little on. chimney sweep. I <laughs> <laughs> Penny for the homeless guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll get back to that forty dollars because I have issues with it, but it'll 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 they'll make more sense later in the movie. So, meanwhile, we got to cut to the party where there's all kind of alcohol and short shorts, and I do believe every one of us has some reference to the opening scene of International Gorillas in their yeah. notes here. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. think, Very much so. <laughs> I think I saw a Starbucks coffee. An IBC root beer and a Yoohoo. Yeah. In addition to like a couple of bot other bottles. Of Look, I know Christian movie makers probably don't listen to our show a whole bunch, but just in case there's one or two out there, bottles do not necessarily equal beer bottles. Just we can see <laughs> based on the size and shape. That's a Snapple bottle. I know what a Snapple <laughs> bottle looks like. And also... Not everyone who takes a sip of a beer, and you should know this from when Daddy did the bad touch, immediately shakes their head like it's Uncle Jay's moonshine. They're supposed to be drinking like Natty Ice, and they're like, oh, that's strong stuff. Strong stuff. They didn't even get red cups. They got see-through plastic cups. Come on, people. There's also, and this is very important spiritually to me that everyone knows this, for some reason they didn't want to say hell yeah in this movie. Yes. So throughout this movie, the characters go... 
H yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That'll come up a couple of that times. That comes back. That comes back. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Cameron, who apparently wears his sunglasses at night at parties. Oh, he's the fucking. W- I hate him so much. Oh, he's so punchable. <laughs> he was the worst outside. Now he's even more the worst because they're in. He's <laughs> terrible. Also, one other thing about the drinking. Uh, partway through the scene, Sean, the main character, actually passes out from yeah. drink. Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen like you're a teenage girl that saw Elvis. You don't <laughs> swoon into your bed because you. Yeah, right, but that's how we have to get to him flashing back to fights with his dad. And my notes here were just generic angry kid words, generic reasonable dad words. Well, and, <laughs> right. and we should talk about, like, they did not write a script for this movie. Or if they did, they, like, had a Thai guy translate it for them because it is nonsense. Like, you hear it and it just Im- immediately leaves your brain. It's impossible to remember because it's like, I don't want the pressure. You don't know what pressure is. You're perfect, <laughs> son. What are we going to do? Just give me the money. And I'm just like, oh, I heard all those words. I knew what they meant. But in the order they said them, I didn't hear anything. There is so much of that. There's one scene in particular where I'm just like, they're angry at each other, and I have no idea why. <laughs> but, yeah, it's painfully fucking bad. It's, it's, it's as though they were working from two separate scripts on this, on this little fight. But, yeah. Yeah, one of them was Varsity Blues because he's basically like, I don't want your life. Yeah. <laughs> and then, okay, so then we get this weird little backstory moment it's it's the backstory of him leaving home as an adult right right like all movies contain adults who don't live with their parents and few of them feel like they need to fill you in on how that came to be well first he got pushed out of a vagina and then you know (laughs) kindergarten first grade second grade third grade blah 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 blah. (laughs) then he buys a car yeah, right. And he buys for, a car in cash, for, in a handful of cash from a disembodied arm. And I just wrote my notes, dude, get the Carfax. This episode brought to you by Carfax.com and Donald Trump. Grab your car by the pussy. <laughs> but this whole intro scene is just him buying a car and renting an apartment yeah. like you do as a grown up. But we're supposed to be like, ugh, bad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I that, that's so fucking bizarre. It, this whole movie felt like this kid trying to set up in his own mind that moving back in with his parents was the right thing to do, was a good thing to do, was a wise decision or whatever. Because yeah, it presents like him doing that the way like the way another movie might present like deciding to go ahead and suck the cock for crack. Yeah, doing the meth. This is <laughs> they play the meth music and they shoot it in the meth lens, but he's just like so first of the month and the guy's like, "Ah, hey, you know, anytime in the first two weeks of the month, just get it to me." And it's like boom 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 boom. boom, boom. <laughs> and it's like, "No, that's not the I want that music to follow me around just like every time I move my right leg so that I have to figure it out just like, "Wait, is it this is bad?" This is this thing right here. I don't. Why am I not supposed to do this? Hotter, colder. <laughs> fucking bizarre choices. Many a bizarre choice. Meanwhile, back in the present day, he's waking up after the party. Um, and and I just the only reason I, I mention this is because we, we we keep seeing this picture of him with his parents, which means that the the, the kid who wrote this movie is like, I need something that represents my relationship with my parents. What could we use? What could we? Oh, I got it. A picture of me with my parents. What about this giant painting that used to hang in my living room of me and my parents? No, no, too subtle. <laughs> <laughs> so, and now it's time to meet the uh, the, the female lead um, when he wanders into a diner and she happens to be waiting tables. Right. And he's like, hey, what's your name? And she's like, I don't want to tell you my name. And then he's like, I want to know your name. So she <laughs> Sherlock Holmes him. She's like, you have been in there. Tell me when your nipples, did they grow chafe? <laughs> <laughs> Fava beans. I literally had, she is the Sherlock Holmes slash Hannibal Lecter of shooting guys down. <laughs> and, yeah. She basically answers with the like XKCD comic about negging. It was right. excellent. Like he wasn't being a douchebag quite yet, but he was definitely about to, as we're going to find out. So, and his response is, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> I, really? Yes. Uh huh. Literally, Holy she says, shit. I'm not interested. And his response is, I'm a good guy. Yeah. Oh, my fucking God. So, yeah. So basically, like, he's hitting on this waitress. She makes it very clear that she's not interested. 
and we're supposed to think, oh, that, that stingy bitch, he better, uh, he better really, uh, dig in there. Maybe stalk her a little later. Maybe, uh, show up at her work at, uh, odd hours and stuff. Then he Sherlock Holmeses her right back. Well, except for all his stuff is stupid. He's like, I see that you have <laughs> legs. I, <laughs> yeah, it's true. You <laughs> appear to be bipedal. I see you're left handed. No, that's irrelevant yeah. to everything. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. But you are though. Cause you have pen. <laughs> I, but I, cause your, your pen, I saw your pen in your left hand. What? Were you not thinking of a red card, not? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, all right, mentalist. My name's Allie. And I have a crater in my face that we're just not going to talk about the entirety of this movie. Just a big old moon spot. Also, she's a dancer. Now, I don't mention that because that's important. I mention that because that is the only line of character that this character will ever be given. She is a dancer. What does she yeah. do in her spirit? She dances. Dance. Period. And I, I'm convinced that's because... That's the only way Christian movies can think of sneaking cleavage, but whatever. She's a goddamn dancer. She describes being a dancer the way I describe to strangers that I work in radio. When they're like, oh, what radio? I'm like, radio. And they're like, really? What was, ra I have a show on the radio. Really? What are you, radio? I'm not fighting with you about this radio. I can't tell you the name of any of these things. So now we're back to like a smoke filled party room where Cameron is being all high and disrespectful and Sean is rethinking all the bad choices he's made in the first several minutes of this movie. Yeah. And Cameron's starting line here at the beginning of the scene is I'm not going to hold your hand after that. Are you kidding me? Like what situation is he talking about? Like buffalo wings on a date? <laughs> like cattle insemination? What were they doing? <laughs> Buffalo wings and cattle insemination. Yeah, Dream why does that day. have to be an either or? <laughs> By the way, if you guys want to enter, you can win a buffalo wings and cow insemination date with Heath. It's still <laughs> open. It's on Omez. <laughs> but no, Cameron's telling like a, I, I thought it was a hand job story. I thought it was like yeah, if she jerked yeah. me off, I came in her hand and I was like, gross, I'm not touching you. But what, how, I've had my jizz on my hand, like right now I have my jizz on my hand. Like what are we? <laughs> How is that disgusting? <laughs> yeah, jizz on your hands is like the Incredible Hulk. It's just like it's I'm all the secret is I'm always have jizz on my hands. Like, <laughs> but yeah, Cameron Cameron before this scene, the actor that played Cameron wrote bad people say chicks, and like that was his note because he was just like so this chick and that chick chickity chick chick chick. Yeah, right. and black girl hears that and she storms off. Right, right, exactly. But he talks her down by telling her that she's sexy when she's mad. Nobody has ever lived through saying that. <laughs> right? <laughs> I turned to Anna at this point. We were watching the movie and I said, how would you? And she said, I punch you in the balls. And I was like, fair. <laughs> fair. <laughs> now I'm really mad. How sexy was that? Also, <laughs> Cameron has pills of drugs. Drug okay, pills, well, guys. He has very clearly a bottle of like amoxicillin <laughs> antibiotic. And they act like it's ecstasy. It's not. Right. right. Well, because, you know, you get prescribed ecstasy. It comes in well, the <laughs> right. bottle. I was like, what are those perks? Because, like, <laughs> perks don't make you go into, like, woo. Money. It's just like, all right, this wine is better now. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Holy shit. So, yeah, so the, they take drugs and have sex with black women until the night is, uh, is, is done. And then we show him waking up. Um, it was, and like basically we're 16 minutes into the pre movie now. It'll be nice when the story starts. And then we get some more of this shitty 10th grade voiceover diary nonsense. And it's, this is, this is the most amazing moment of the movie to me because the big revelation that he has here is that he goes in the voiceover, I'm like the main character in a movie, aren't I? Oh. It, it's such a bad voiceover. They they do this throughout the movie. It's like Webster's Dictionary defines choices <laughs> as the bad things I'm making with the start of this essay and this movie. Like, come on. Yeah, you're the main the, character. The monologue throughout this film is trying to fill the 10-page double-spaced limit. He's like, and many people would say that that isn't the way, but to those who would say that it isn't the way, I would say, it's like, oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, Oh, it's so fucking painful. So fucking bad. It's it's everything anyone ever wanted you to read that you didn't want them to read to you. <laughs> the movie. Terrible. Yeah. 
Uh, but that's okay because now he's going to soccer tackle the waitress girl. <laughs> <laughs> This is the clumsiest bumping into someone scene in the history it, of film. It's so stupid, too. It's like an already met cute. That's like <laughs> we, they, they already have met each other. Whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So he's walking by texting or whatever and, and bumps into the, and literally bumps into the waitress, knocks her to the ground in the clumsiest, oh, let me sit down now kind of way you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So he offers her, he offers to walk her wherever she's going. And I want her to just go, Utah. I'm going to fucking Utah. Get your fucking boots on, bitch. But it, but she's like, no, I would rather you didn't. He's like, well, you, I'm going to walk with you anyway, so you don't really have a choice. Isn't that romantic? And it's not. No? It's not. It's stalking. She just yep. hasn't blown her whistle yet. Like, so they go for a baby oh, cool. walk. Can I get one of those? Doo, doo, doo. What yep. are we doing? <laughs> Here comes the romance train. <laughs> Also, they have this weird, and it's because it's badly written, but they have this fucking insane moment where she won't tell him what kind of dance she does. And he's like, what kind of dance? She's like, mm. and he's like, what kind of dance? And I, I was like, at this point, she's a stripper, right? Right. She has to be a stripper. Otherwise, you're just like ballet. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, pole dancing. That's clearly the answer. Well, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. And, and also, like his strategy, I guess, again, keep in mind, this actor wrote this movie for himself right so the lines he writes for himself when he meets this girl is like oh i'm very interested in you so let me tell you all about myself and my backstory oh yeah. he's the way he's not even charming when it's a script and her script clearly says be charmed by this before her line <laughs> but she clearly hates him yeah oh yeah right and lacks the acting acumen to pretend she doesn't for any moment in this fucking movie well, yeah, and she doesn't know when she's supposed to be charmed because all of his lines are so terrible. So he'll be like, anyways, and she'll be like, ha, 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 when was I, what was the joke? <laughs> the joke that your character just told my character that I found charming. <laughs> are we done shooting? I need to put another layer of lacquer on my teeth. <laughs> so, but the important thing is he browbeats her into a date. Fuck this movie. And now it's back to English class so he can noisily show up late and Professor Truman can get angry at him again. Right. Because, again, this is telling your story 101. This has been weeks into the class and he's still giving the long monologue about whether or not your story matters. And then he branches off into some people believe in right and wrong and some people are atheists. Yeah, well, he does. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. It's so fucking stupid. Yeah, first I'm of all, an English, English teacher. Well, in English, apparently, is the, the plot of this movie 201 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because there's no he, he never is like they're never talking about an assignment that they've read or they've never, never read a book composition. <laughs> nothing. No. In English class, they never read a fucking book. It's all like how to keep a 10th grade. I got dumped diary. I believe you can major in that. Yeah. And the professor, he's still doing the like drill sergeant thing. But now he's like trying to be Socrates at the same time. Like, oh, maybe there's no such thing as a good story or a bad story. Uh, and if I end everything I say with a question mark, I sound like a professor. I mean, professor, <laughs> we live in a world of relative morality, right? Yes. Like, come on. How did you transition to that? Like the world needs absolute morals from a higher power. Uh, now that religion's fading away, kids are getting raped. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yes. No, no, no. Roll it back. Roll it back. He calls on Cameron and Cameron literally gives a Donald Trump answer. He's just like, Cameron. And Cameron's like, oh, the best things, the best assignments, the best, the greatest assignments. We'll build an assignment and it'll be the best. And he's like, all right, that wasn't word. Sean and Sean <laughs> apparently rejects the Aristotelian ideas of drama as proposed by <laughs> poetics. But instead he stands up and he's like, why do you hate God? Sorry, wrong movie. Wrong movie. <laughs> yeah, no, no. K Sorbs would have put this guy in a chokehold by now. Um, but, but that's the thing is that like only tangentially related to the question that professor truman was expounding on here it, it, sean just goes off on this like i don't want anyone telling me what to do speech which he will do over and over again in this fucking movie and but but the way he frames it here is he's like i feel like life is about finding your own meaning and i'm writing in my notes like this goddamn movie is going to be anti finding your own meaning isn't it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's trying he's trying to convince himself that this is possibly a good movie too 
He's like, I think anything could be good art. It's all relative. <laughs> Pretty sure Moishi agrees with that. That's two stabs at Moishi today. <laughs> exactly. Also, this is just another moment of how badly written this movie is. Don't watch this movie. This movie's no fun to watch. But there is a great moment where the professor's like, yeah, stand up, defend your great case. And he talks for 30 seconds and he's like, sit down. And he's like, you asked me to stand up. You're damn right I did. <laughs> this is poorly staged. <laughs> we didn't think through the blocking at all and and but but what he's yelling he's yelling angry at dad in an after school special words you know like they're in the middle of this uh, who gives a fuck what they're in the middle of discussing but now suddenly in the middle of this english class this kid is arguing with the professor over whether people can tell him what to do and how to live his life yeah, I mean, I gotta admit, I mean, maybe I didn't take the right English classes, but whether or not there's an absolute source of morality never <laughs> came up when we were discussing Moby fucking Dick. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, we read stuff in my English classes and mostly talked about other people's books. Oh, did you not read chapter three of the English textbook <laughs> in, in your English yes. class? Do college English classes have a textbook like that? <laughs> or is it just like pieces of literature, as I understand? Okay. <laughs> Go to one college. Come on. <laughs> right at some point. Um, yeah, but the, the the clear message here is Professor Truman thinks that Sean needs more God or he'll fail English and keep showing up late for class or whatever. Um, and because we're just we're literally just recycling scenes after the Professor Truman class scene comes the Cameron and Sean commiserating over the previous scene scene. Yep. <laughs> So now we get the two of them are talking about how there's no absolute authority of right and wrong, et cetera, like kids do, you know. But they're kind of broing out about it. Like, it's not even, like, supposed to be a philosophical talk. Cameron's like, hey, man, can I ask you a serious question? Um, I was going to get, like, crystal and absolute <laughs> and do you think there's right and wrong from, like, an ontological perspective? <laughs> oh, also, get get some garnish. Get, like, cherries. <laughs> Girls like cherries. <laughs> yeah, well, and this was the first time I noticed the H, yeah. I didn't realize they'd if they'd been saying that earlier in the movie. I didn't notice it until now. Netflix's subtitles rejected it. Netflix has heck yeah. <laughs> oh, whatever, does it really? Yeah, whatever hearing impaired person was in charge of this movie was like, nope, not today, sir. <laughs> You're not writing H, dad. You're writing heck. You're writing heck, and I'll take the consequences because this movie. I've had to do three Christian movies this week, and Shirley's gotten to do the Ben Affleck ones. She gets to pause them and figure out what he's saying. So fuck it, <laughs> fuck it. Oh, I'm gonna make one of them say cunt. I also love to. Okay, so because this is when Cameron like learns that there's this waitress chick that he's flirting with or whatever. And Cameron's the, the character is going like, hey, man, if she's a church girl, you just have to ease her into things. But she'll still fuck you, basically. And I love how all of these movies pretend that Christian girls are harder to fuck than like 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 the, the church girls don't fuck. Yeah, I'm sorry. Every girl in my fucking high school was a church girl. Yeah, even the pregnant ones. And uh, I love that, like, even if they do fuck, it's because the guys trick them into it. Like, women, no women ever want to have sex in Christian movies, no. ever. It's just about how well they resist the wiles of men. Because they're like, oh, look, the coin's in one hand. It's gone. Have sex with me. And they're like, oh, fuck, I didn't follow the coin. All right, let's go. <laughs> Loving the bad man. All right, my high school was different than yours. It just seemed like all the girls didn't fuck. I did, <laughs> regardless of religion, whatever. <laughs> It's a totally different different part of the world. different geography. Different, yeah, exactly. I told them I was Back starring in the musical in my high school. Never seemed to impress the way I thought it should. But ah, it's another day. It's another day. <laughs> so this is, of course, also where we get the first uh, him getting money out of the ATM shot, and I'm just like, st I'm just staring at the screen, going like, "Is someone going to run in? Is he going to get robbed? Is there going to be a reason for this? <laughs> no, nope. but nope. Do you want a receipt? Let's see if he gets a receipt. I wonder if he's going to get a receipt. Why don't you read it? Check check your balance, too. Why not check your balance? God damn it. Well, also, we learn his pin starts with 15. Yes. Luke 15, super clever. Also, he he lives in apartment 15. They're all over this. Very subtle Crazy movie. Uh, how well they managed to weave that Tied in. Tied it. So now it's back to uh, to dancer girl, and we're cutting to the end of her two student dance class. I love this. This is so clearly the the one dude's daughters or whatever. Yeah, because she, she she has to be like <laughs> telling her class to leave, but it's just two girls who are obviously sisters about four years apart. Yep, 
couldn't even rustle up nine young girls for this. I mean, come on, Eli can do that on Sunday afternoon with nothing but a half a Hershey's bar. That's true. Andrew told me to offer him wine. <laughs> <laughs> Take legal advice from a podcast. <laughs> if you cut it just right, he says that on every show. Uh, <laughs> And and then I guess she's going to dance until he shows up. So finally we learn that the style of dancing that she does is masturbating and porn for women. <laughs> style. Well, she does lyrical dancing, which now I understand why she didn't want to tell him, because lyrical dance is the smooth jazz of dance. You just don't tell people you do it. It's a shameful, <laughs> terrible activity that should be expunged from the earth. <laughs> She's dancing like Lebowski's landlord. It's, yes! it's really sad. Like, like, like she's part of an improv troupe and somebody yelled out ballet dancer. And she, just started. <laughs> she had the time of her life. She never felt this way before. It's wonderful. Yeah. And he watches her from the window and it's supposed to be this like, she's so beautiful moment, but it's like, it was like a dance from the fucking movie. <laughs> right. Because it's just a person rolling around on the fucking floor. There's yeah. nothing dance esque about. I am not a mobile man, but I can do every dance move this actress does, and I shall at QED next week. Tune in. <laughs> I, I, I just love, my, my actual note when he comes in is you. You said you could dance, but I've never seen parkour that impressive. Um, <laughs> It was it was painfully bad. But also the other thing, too, is that, like, again, a good actor could sell this as this like, oh, I'm captivated by her dance, even if her dance is crappy. But what he sells is I'm masturbating just below <laughs> this fucking shot. Yeah, it's it's incredibly creepy. But so now he takes her out on a date and they try to be clever with this. You can tell that this is the one date this guy thinks he nailed in his life. Because yeah. he, he does this whole, like, five senses thing. He's like, first, I'm going to wow your sense of sight and blah, blah, blah. But it's actually dinner and a movie. Well, first they go to a museum hallway. <laughs> well, yeah, well right. right. That was the darkest part. Well, actually, we're getting to the darkest part of this movie, but that was one of the weirdest parts of this movie. They're so clearly in a hallway lined with photographs, and they're so clearly supposed to be in a museum, and both the actors are like, well... This didn't look as good as we thought it would. <laughs> we should give your mom her family photos back. Yeah, right. This is the hall to the dentist. You know, this is the hallway they take you down to the little room. Yes. Uh -huh. I, I loved his line, though. He oh, goes, it's great. He looks at one of the little paintings in the hallway. He's like, I enjoy the lack of resolve in that piece. Like, really? Like, after that, I usually say, let's touch brains, but it never seems to work. <laughs> Well, and then we have to reinforce the whole how classy is this motherfucker because then he takes her to like an art house theater and they 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 walk out they like they we see him going in and then we see him coming out immediately after with the most banal generic after movie talk you can imagine. Yeah. He says she says I can't believe the stepmother turned out to be the bad one the entire time and it's like wow man you've never seen a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Or heard a fairy tale, for fuck's sake, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, but that is so that they can cleverly lead into the part where he's like, oh, I was sure it was going to be the pastor. And she goes, you have something against pastors? It's like, do you have something against stepmoms? I, but, <laughs> but whatever, that's where the conversation now goes, so that she can learn that his dad was a pastor and also yeah. that he doesn't like everyone telling him what to do. And uh, Lord knows, to her surprise, the only one who could ever reach her <laughs> is the son of a preacher man, as it turns out here. Yeah. As it happens, Lovely. yeah. Lovely. And so so now it's time for smell and taste. And uh, they're walking through a creepy, like, back alley. And he's like, all right, smell and taste. And she's like, okay, what is it? <laughs> I wanted to be like, oh, it's a surprise right behind this dumpster. Check it out. <laughs> that was the clear tone of this character but it really was it really was a moment of like smell and taste come over here no nope, no nope. i want to hear wait let's shout and see if anyone turns ah help me oh no too close <laughs> too close <laughs> come on over here and then we get to the second time this has happened in a movie we've watched and the most depressing moment which is where he's feeding her sushi but it's supposed to be crazy exotic why is sushi exotic? That's really a bummer. That's really a Because that's right. not related to Christianity. That just means that these people are like, but what does he do to like captivate her to a faraway land? And it's like, I don't know. There's that Chinese restaurant where they wrap it all up <laughs> in the seaweed. And it's like, I think it's Japanese. Yeah, whatever. Chinese, Japanese. Look at these. 
If there's a goddamn restaurant devoted to it in Valdosta fucking Georgia, it is not exotic, people. But again, these characters are like, what is this called? And he's like, oh, it is from the far off land of Japan. (laughs) (laughs) It's fucking so depressing. So depressing. Yeah. And and then she goes like, uh, so, yeah, so they watched a movie and they went to a museum and they ate food and she's like, what about sound? And I'm like, was, was it a silent movie? Did, was there, <laughs> are you not talking? I mean, like, like, like it, I get how you're trying to frame it, but that's not even, even within your frame, that makes no sense. And I want to point out, I wrote as a joke in my notes when she says, what about sound? I wrote in my notes, I want him to just start singing. If you want <laughs> no, no, you Wouldn't don't. Wouldn't that be hilarious? <laughs> there really wasn't. It was really bad. Uh, but but I love too because his answer here is like ah, I figured you'd have ditched me by now and she's like yeah you know what that is a great idea uh, we're done I'm I'm, yep. I'm leaving you gave you want to walk out. me home and he's like sure and then yes I, we get to hear him fucking sing and this is where I went to all oh. caps and bold and larger font oh I wanted so bad for just a better singer to walk in and steal the date <laughs> like an Kick acapella those- group fly no. <laughs> We have to listen to him sing for five minutes. Uh, and it's pretty goddamn bad. And so so once that's over, I guess we just have to linger in this brain callousing conversation a little bit longer. So she goes like, why did you leave home, Sean? You over 18 year old in college, you? <laughs> this is not a question that needs answered. Why did you? Because I'm over 18 and I'm in college. Well, they're back to back like they're doing a what? fucking prom portrait. I wrote in my notes, are they about to duel? That would be a good <laughs> twist for this movie if these characters now duel. For no reason whatsoever, they have the characters stage, stage this conversation on opposite ends of a fucking streetlight facing away from each other. Yeah, no goddamn reason for this. But yeah, so basically he explains to her that, you know, his parents wanted him to go to a Christian school, but he felt like he could excel at community college, so he took his chances. And she comes from a broken... Home and has daddy issues. Well, right. And I love too that like, you know, because because my biggest issue with this movie, well, one of my biggest issues with this movie was just that it like dwelled in all of these non-existent problems, right? Like, oh, this kid has it so hard with all these people telling him how to live his life. And I love that. Like, as soon as she goes into her backstory, it's like, yeah, my dad abandoned me when I was three. And I'm like, oh, well, then this guy needs to shut the fuck up around you forever. Right. About his problems. <laughs> But he smells like Old Spice, so it's working. It's working. <laughs> yeah, I wrote down, you ever want to meet him or, like, role-play meeting him? Just throw it out there. Just, out there. Oh, Just me? There's one guy right now who's super uncomfortable. I feel you, dude. I feel you. <laughs> Just you and me. So yeah, so he doesn't, uh, he doesn't get the, he doesn't get a kiss or anything. He, she, she boots him off. And so I guess then he goes to meet up with Cameron and salacious black girl after the date to drink more alcohol and be more bad. Right. And basically they, they're wandering around the campus and Cameron's like, Hey man, look, that's, that's professor Tubman's class. You, you should, you should do a monologue into this camera and, and, th- <laughs> and, and, and throw also throw, throw a bottle. And uh. so he does. Yes. This clumsily set up, like you should scream what's really on your mind into the air right now. But it's uh, so terrible. He's it, literally, he's just like, whatever, I do what I want. What? Throws a bottle and he's like, I broke something or something. All right, let's go. That yeah. scene is taken care of. Cut. Right. So now that we got his fucking profanity free tirade about his angst or whatever, the key uh. thing that we have to know about this is that the black girl was videotaping it the whole time. Mm. And then he throws the bottle and it apparently breaks a window or something. Post, Who knows? Post monologue. Yeah, hits hits Professor Tubman in the back of the head, <laughs> <laughs> and the speech is so bad. Like it uh, might as well be John Galt. Like he might as well ask if God if he's being detained in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> so shitty. So, so now we're back in class, and Sean isn't even paying attention to Professor Truman. He's um, fantasizing about how awesome it was to throw that bottle. I guess. Yeah, and and basically, so basically, the professor says to him, like, so Sean. Have you decided what Act 2 will be about? (laughs) Have you decided about my false dichotomy yet? Either A, choices matter, or B, you want to continue being an atheist. Time (laughs) to choose. So terrible. 
Listen, I do not like the way you are planning to live the rest of your life, and I will give you a bad grade on a creative writing assignment if you do not change your mind. <laughs> That's the stakes of this film, folks. And also, I love, again, how little pay, uh, they're paying attention to their own fucking movie. At this point, like, he gets a call from his mom, and he just ignores it. And we're supposed to be going like, oh, he's ignoring calls from mom, but he's in class. Yeah, he's, he's like, sorry, professor, I know you're talking directly to me, but my mom is calling me. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, and then Professor Truman stops him on his way out of class because, again, we're just recycling scenes from this point on. And again, same exact conversation. I want yep. you to know you're the main character from Catcher in the Rye, but that's a bad thing for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. He tells him he has immense potential, but no discipline. And the professor also threatens how he's going to be grading those papers. Like, who the what? fuck else would be grading the papers? <laughs> yeah. How is that a threat? Was he even trying to say, I'd love to know what they actually think college is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, now, so everyone hand your paper to the right. And if you make it from the top down to the bottom, that's an A. If you only make it about halfway down, you fail. <laughs> and light their chair on fire. <laughs> Somebody write your God, God's dead on it and then you'll be okay. But okay, but also like the movie is talk. Okay, because like the, the, the movie is the assignment that he's writing. It's the essay about his life, right? So the movie is stopping at the end of act one to say, you know, the first part of this movie wasn't very good. You can do better than this. And I appreciate the honesty. I appreciate that they're giving their own script a failing grade within the film. It's true. So now guess what happens after class? We get Cameron and Sean commiserating about class for the third goddamn time yeah. in the first half of this film. However, we do get a really golden moment here where Cameron goes, yeah, man, I mean, my parents used to give me money to go away all the time. And it's like, I get it, Cameron. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> also, for this whole little scene here, there's a table stuck to the camera lens i think i'm just like you gonna wipe that off or or move or no they are not they are not a little bit you guys didn't you, you forgot to bring the uh tripod today anyway yeah so and and of course um you know this is more like cameron like trying to tempt him into going out and partying tonight instead of studying because you know he doesn't have god so, you know, that's like peer pressure, peer pressure, arm twist, arm twist, and he agrees. You yeah, have this forbidden apple hard cider. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're the bad guy, Ray-Bans. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then we finally get a little tiny case orbs fix. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's eating with mom. Mom looks like Gollum put on a blonde wig to trick someone out of the precious. <laughs> she looks like she should be explaining that grabbing by the pussy is a compliment on Fox News right now. <laughs> Yeah, and, and also uh, there's this another great blocking moment here because this scene starts with her setting down the plates. The scene's 18 seconds long and ends with him picking up the plates. Well, dinner minute is over. <laughs> I love that. It's like they have no fucking idea, do they? And And of course, this is just so that she can say to him as he's taking the plates into the kitchen, she's like, I called him today. And then there is sadness, and there is sadness piano hitting. Yeah. That's it. We just we just wanted to remind you, Kay Storbs is in this movie, apparently. Yeah, and we already know you called him. Your son's the main character. He was in the last scene. We saw that happen. <laughs> yeah, second dinner. I, again, all we have established here is that Kay Storbs is in this movie, and I think that's all they were going for. Yep. Well, to be fair, in the last scene, the phone did say home. So a lot of people watching this movie were probably like, wait, why did he get a call from my home? That's what my phone said. <laughs> did you call this motherfucker? <laughs> Running yeah, out of minutes. to make minutes. sure nobody's wife got beaten. So yeah, they had to put that in to clarify. That could be it. That could be it. Um, so, so now we get more of like just sort of a montage of him needing to get his life together where his voiceover is basically saying, I'm not sure who I am as a character. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Also, they try to do the Zach Braff thing, the like Garden State montage where everyone speeds up and he's sitting on the couch, but they don't know how to do it right. So <laughs> it's obviously like a couple of people just like, <laughs> 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 and uh, one of the lines here, it's the voiceover. He's going, the hardest choice in life is deciding who to listen to. 
and then they give you a shot of Ray Bans looking all douchey and evil. And I so wanted to cut to like God also wearing Ray Bans <laughs> on the couch next to him taking a bong hit. Like, all right, shit. God, don't be a jerk. Clear it, man. <laughs> You're gonna get the glass all foggy. At least tap it out. <laughs> so, so then he he goes back to see the waitress. Um, and this is this is you know because it's not just college they don't know how works it's oh. also working they have never been to a restaurant or yeah possibly any job because <laughs> yeah waitresses love it when you show up at their job and try to get them to leave two hours before they cash out and the rest of the staff hates it when they leave they have side work that's not happening no right so that's what happens he comes in and he's like hey i thought we could go out she's like i have two more hours before my shift is over and her boss is like yeah we don't need you she's like yeah, but I work for money. No, you're good. Don't worry about it. Get out of here, you. And she just literally drop her, drops her apron on the floor. And you imagine after she leaves, that waitress turns to a full restaurant and is like, all right, Karen, today's the day. <laughs> <laughs> you serve an entire diner on your own. <laughs> yeah, I, I love, too, that, yeah, she doesn't even have to change or grab anything from the back. She just wanders out the door and her, yeah. So then, then we get them, like, wandering in the park and stuff, because apparently they didn't... They didn't think we got enough of these two fucking characters to get that, oh, they have a budding romance. Yep. So the director decides that we need to watch them, like, go to date rate point together for a little while, too. Well, you see, she mentioned earlier that dancing is her escape and make out point is his escape. <laughs> so he wanted to show it to her. And... He brought sparkling juice, oh, for which fuck's sake. would be adorable if they were nine. But <laughs> since they're full grown adults, unless you're force feeding sparkling juice to a hitcher you have at the bottom of a well in your basement, you need to get yourself some fucking booze, people. <laughs> and, and Allie's response, he breaks out the sparkling grape juice and the disgusting, dirty plastic cups. She's like, yeah, well, I tried the hard stuff a few times, but it wasn't worth it. Like, what the fuck is she... Like, sparkling heroin? What hard <laughs> stuff? Yeah, I wrote, I used to drink the A word, but it was holding me back. Now I'm a waitress who teaches kids dance. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Now my dreams are coming true. Um, and, and so, like, yeah, and she's, like, going, like, oh, this is so beautiful. I'm, like, this is make-out point from a 50s movie. But also, ladies, never let this guy, any guy, really, but this guy take you to this place. This could not be a rapier location. There's a great moment where she's, they're, like, having this heart-to-heart. -heart, and, and we should point out that she says something that's, like, from her heart, and then she goes, I don't know why I'm saying all this, constantly throughout the movie, as though you have to have your life story tortured out of you during a courting process. <laughs> but she goes, I don't know, I've always wondered if it was my fault that my dad left when I was three. And I wanted to be like, I mean, did you go super hard on animal crackers? Sometimes that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Yeah, we also get this her telling the story of being jealous because one of her friend's dads bought her a little cross necklace. She's like, yeah, I wanted it so bad. It was just this little thing that you could easily get me later in the movie. <sighs> but yeah, yeah. So we set that up nice and subtle. And she's and then she's like, so what about you? And he goes, I got tired of being told how to live. And she's like, that's it. He's like, that's my only vote motivation and most of my lines. Yep, that's it. That's all I have to say. And he goes in for a kiss. And he leads in and he gets denied. It's so awkward. It's amazing. I just wrote, never move the camera again. I love it. <laughs> so fun. But it's not even like him going in for a kiss. He starts to lean in slightly towards her and she just keeps going, I can't. Not now. And I'm like, you can't <laughs> kiss? Okay. Like you can't. But she's like, no, not yet. Three, two, one, still no. Still, like, it's, just a weird, <laughs> it's not an I don't want to kiss you moment. It's like a the, the dog is watching. It's a the dog is watching moment. <laughs> it, it, it was it was a painfully awkward moment compared to trying to kiss a chick that doesn't want to kiss you. Like for that, it was awkward. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And, and also, I love that, like, leading up to that, he basically tells her, he's like, you're so lucky your dad abandoned you. <laughs> God, you don't even know how hard it was. My dad always wanted me to do things and stuff. Yeah. I bet your dad never even knew you. I'm crushing this. I wrote these lines down for me to say. <laughs> on purpose. I did Agua Velva this time. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to hit it eventually. I'm just going alphabetical at this point. <laughs> now and, and now it's time for more uh, like shitty VO while he gets more money out of the ATM. And basically the VO is just like, my life is so rough. All I have in life is this car. 
and money that I don't have to work <laughs> for and a college tuition and parents that love me and white skin and heterosexuality. But other than that, I'm on my own. In this remote control, in this VCR, <laughs> this paddle game. This paddle game. <laughs> and it's he, these aren't bad things. It's like he, it's food. This he's been using his money for well, tuition right. and room and board and like a homeless guy. How is this bad? <laughs> that's not what prodigal means. <laughs> well, that's just the thing. Yeah, because eventually the money runs out, and we're supposed to be like, yeah, you shouldn't have lived your life like that. But all we ever see him spending money on is the kind of shit that your parents would give you money for when you go to college if you had parents who could give you money when you went to college. Look at you renting a room <laughs> to sleep in like a prince. <laughs> There's also, this is, Cameron comes out again because, hey, we haven't gotten enough wacky antics with Cameron. And Cameron's like, hey, man, are you in the friend zone? He's like, I'm not in the friend zone. I drink apple juice and I'm not allowed to kiss her. <laughs> <laughs> it's going great. To which Cameron says, hey, let's go get ice cream like grownups, you know, yeah. <laughs> like grownups do. We also get another terrible voiceover in the scene. He's like, how do you find a good ending for your story? Seriously. <laughs> we need to fill 45 All more right. minutes. If you know how to end this story, plus three. <laughs> <laughs> Para Espanol, marque cinco. <laughs> so, also, okay, so then in the next scene or whatever, we get him texting the dancer girl. You know, she's stretching because she's dancer girl. We literally watch them have a full fucking text message conversation not like hey what's going on not much let's get we watched them text back like seven fucking <laughs> yes. times and each time i was like it's still going it's still fucking going <laughs> it's still fucking going it's like the vomiting scene from family guy He's just like i can't believe how long <laughs> they thought we would have to they thought it was a good idea for us to read over characters shoulders in this movie well right and that's the thing it's not like they're doing that thing like in house of cards where you can just read the text on the screen or whatever. They're, we're like looking at it from an angle and you can tell the cameraman's going, no, 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 a little more to me, a little more to me and up. We actually spend time watching it say other person typing, dot, <laughs> dot, dot. Yes. That happens for several minutes in this movie. Yes. Yeah, this movie clearly seems to think these pictures are moving is still enough. Yeah, yeah. but then, then he finally texts her to try to get another date and it's basically like, oh, sorry, I tried to kiss you. Hadn't spoken to your dad yet or... <laughs> Any of the other men with leans, but <laughs> let me try this one more time, and it works. Yeah, right. So they meet again at date rate point because the scene we had two scenes ago, we have to do again now because apparently they just didn't get everything out that last time. Right. But we do get a little problem of evil here. He brings yes. up problem of evil, and her response is, maybe it's your fault you can't guess God's favorite number between one and a million. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the, the janitorial apologetic of the day is, maybe you're not trying hard enough to listen to God. Right. And look, I'm sorry, but like as a person who communicates for a living, that's not how it works. You know, if somebody like writes me and says, like, hey, I can't download your show this week, I don't say, well, you're not trying hard enough to listen. That's on me. That's my fault as the communicator. Okay, but seriously, some of the time, most of the time when you people message us, like, your phone's broken. You <laughs> always message me, like, 20 minutes later, and you're like, it's working now. And I'm like, yeah, because I would have gotten a thousand fucking messages if it wasn't just you. Look on the Facebook page. Jesus Christ, my personal Facebook? You think I do the editing? I'm trying not to eat peanuts during the record. It's fine. I'm not mad. <laughs> it's fine. Audio boom. It's on audio boom now. How many of you got it from Libsyn? What did you do? You just opened your fucking computer like a serial killer and walked around with an open laptop listening to our show? Buy an iPod. I still love you guys. I still love you. Um, so yeah, yeah. But this is also where she gives him the I've been going to church line. And I love to because she's like, I've been going to church. And he throws out the why with all the disgust that I would use if Lucinda said it to me. Why? Rumph. And he like throws a rock yeah, angrily. Right? Yeah. <laughs> And he's like, hey, I mean, if you're going to go to church, go ahead. But, like, be careful. Churches are full of spikes and vampires. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's like, be careful. And I want him to go, yeah, you know, the rape and stuff. You know, <laughs> you know, you're, it's you're, actually pretty widespread in there. And they have a whole system covering up. And she's like, ooh, good looking out. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, instead, we dwindle on Pascal's wager a little bit. And we, we also get some more of him trying to, like, Build into the script himself working out 
a better script in his script. Like <laughs> he, he shows up for the day. He's like, Hey, I need more good scenes for this move. My story. Do, <laughs> do you know about screenwriting? And then he actually lists like several types of good scenes in movies that this movie will not ever have. Yeah, right. Right. She's yeah, like, exactly. well, what's in a good movie? And he's like explosions and compelling Poetry. dialogue and characters that you give a fuck about stakes, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Obviously, I don't know. Are we going to roll cameras? <laughs> <laughs> this is also where they take a second to shit on James because she's like, yeah, I go to church and there's this Bible group. And he's like, oh, is this run by some asshole named James? And I wanted the other actor to be like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Man, he's going to look silly when they shoot the scene later where James turns out to be super cool, right? <laughs> I haven't gotten this schedule for that day yet. Has anyone seen what day that is? <laughs> We've only got Kevin for another nine minutes, guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear he's going to come over and give me a big old high five. <laughs> <laughs> and also, again, we get this scene where he tries to go in for the fuck and she stiffs him. Oh, she's like, like red light. <laughs> <laughs> he goes in like Jack Reacher trying to do a headbutt. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's denied. I rewound it so many times. I watched this like 10 more times. It was the it was best. Hilarious. It's pretty good. I'm just writing in my notes like, dude, you she'll let you know there there are signals and stuff, because if you don't wait for the signals, that's raping. I just <laughs> I just want to throw that out there anyway. So they're both sitting there thinking of each other. And then we get a weird shot of Cameron putting on his sunglasses for no fucking reason. And we're back to English class. Yeah. And basically, the teacher's like, so, so far in this class, we have decided what your life is and what it's about. <laughs> what do you think we'll do for the ending? And one of the kids is like, suicide pact? And he's like, mm -hmm, close, <laughs> close, close. No, your final assignment is figure out the point of your entire existence. You will be graded. <laughs> Yeah, he actually says, what makes your story worth being told? And apparently the rest of the script is just going to be reciting a Sid Fields book, I guess. <laughs> it's so bad. And then we get our third stopping Sean after class scene so that we can let him know that the professor is much more impressed with the way act two is going. It's <laughs> movie is improving. Also, the dean needs to see him. So he goes to the dean and it, literally this is the scene. And again, don't watch this movie. This movie's super boring and terrible. But oh, hey, if you're going to do this scene, can I do the audio hiss in the background? Can I just <laughs> <laughs> Throughout my notes, I have Noah. How you like that? You like that? Hiss? How you like that cricket every time they go to make out point? You like that? <laughs> just a cricket being like, your movie fucking sucks. <laughs> Midi cricket. I'm a cricket. Midi cricket. <laughs> Midi cricket. Oh. <laughs> So he comes in and literally the dean turns around in his chair and goes, Mr. Smith, come in. And they zoom in on his shiny fucking bald spot of a head. It could not be more comical. <laughs> and attractive. It was, no, it, was, it, was, it was very like J.J. Uh, Abrams, the way they shot this one. Yeah. Sharp looking dean. <laughs> the record, we, all, we all agree he was a sharp looking dean. That he was. So, but of course, this is where we learn that they've seen video of him throwing the bottle. Oh, no. Well, he goes, we found a video of you on a social networking site. That sentence never ends well because Sean's like, huh, yeah, I'm a pretty popular guy. And it's like, nope, I don't call people in just every time I see them in moving <laughs> pictures. <laughs> And, and of course, if we crazy billionaire this, because uh, they just, you know, they just play the audio when he turns the computer around and the audio is gay porn in the crazy billionaire version. <laughs> oh, sorry. Nope. That was already up. That was already up. Uh, nope. <laughs> oh, wait, that is you, too, though. We found you on that site, too. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So That's why he's... that was there. <laughs> <laughs> I blind you with the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so he escapes. So, yeah, but, but the, the, the key here is that Sean is now expelled and has to pay $5,000 for the. Yep. $5,000? Did yeah. he hit like a diamond sculpture with that <laughs> bottle? Yes, what the he fuck happened? Must have. You threw that into the Swarovski crystal room. <laughs> <laughs> like, also, they don't get to just like blackmail you for money. He's like, unless you want to get the police involved, that'll be $5,000. Like that's blackmail. If someone breaks your shit, <laughs> you have to get that money from them on a legal basis. You can't just be like, all right, 30 bucks. We'll call it even. Right. <laughs> Might as well right. be like, give us $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> 
And of course, Sean is freaking out. He's like, I'll do anything. I'll take acting classes, I swear. But it's the thing in that video you just showed me. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. I can polish your other head, too. So (laughs) now he goes home to be angry and sad. And they do the thing. Okay, you know the thing in movies where, like, the phone rings and he picks it up and starts automatically yelling, thinking he knows who it is, but he's got the wrong person. They do that. But here's a couple of reasons why that's wrong. Number one. It's a cell phone. Cell phone. That's so, no longer a thing. Yeah, that's not a thing. Number two, we don't even know who he thought that was. <laughs> right. It's not like he was Jake. Because usually in a movie when they do that, it's like, a, I just hung up the phone with Frank, and then the phone rings, and I call back, and I'm like, Frank, God damn it, and then it's the girl or whatever. But it's just, that, like, when his phone rings, he just randomly assigns a person and starts yelling into it, apparently. And he's like, you're right, God's great, and I'm awesome. And the guy's like, hey, man, I'm your landlord. Your rent <laughs> check bounced. Get out. <laughs> Yeah. Here's another thing they don't know how works. Uh, yeah, it's actually his last two rent checks that bounced, we find out. And doesn't it seem like this call would have happened a month ago? It then? seems like, like it, How yeah. does this work? And, th- and then he's evicted by tomorrow? Well, by, yeah, the end of the day today. Like, yeah. or, or, or he turns into a pumpkin? <laughs> what, what is the threat here? You can't just evict people that day. Yeah, but in the Christian movie universe, apparently you can. You can just call them up and say, hey, your last check bounced. Get out of there by the end of the day, and you have to. So, And then, of course, the kid throws the picture of his family, so now the glass is broken like it's a broken family. And then he yells at God so that I could get bingo and, and uh, before the interstitial break, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. And he calls Cameron, and he's like, hey, man, I want to engage in some risk behaviors tonight. We doing any <laughs> risk behaviors? And he's like, sure are, bro. We're not going to dare to resist drugs at all. And he's like, great, I'll see you tonight. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then a few happy shots at the table with Kay Storbs later, and it's time for Sean to go to the big party. But before we can join him, I need a little bit of a reprieve from this stilted bullshit, so we're going to pause for a quick break. But before we do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will Sean's pale and sickly skin burst into flame in the daylight? Will Cameron get grease lightning running in time? Will dancer waitress girl and her friend not have enough money to pay for the pizza? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the pretentious conclusion of Confessions of a Prodigal Son. Listen up, maggots. I want to make clear one thing right now. I ain't your mama and I ain't your friend. You will learn in this class. You will learn harder than you have ever learned before. And when you learn, your butthole will bleed. Do you understand me, maggots? No. No. What's happening? Wait. Wait, what? Yeah. Um, you're not actually allowed to talk to us like that. You're no, a and professor. I mean, why would you think this was a good way for anybody to to, to learn? Well, you know, I'm I'm tough, but I'm firm. You work hard, and it, and then you'll be right. Right. Yeah. Sorry. That's that's not how learning works. That's how the military works. Do you think we're in the military? Wait. Is this is this boot camp at Fort Wash? No, 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 no. This is a college class. No. Oh, fuck. Well, if I'm here... Hello, cadets. I'm drill instructor Armson, but you can call me Ted. Why don't we move all our chairs in a circle? I'll hand out the syllabus of all the push-ups and sit-ups that we're going to be doing this month, and uh, then we'll do a little icebreaker. I'm Tiger Ted. Army's weird. <laughs> Well, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me something. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin our hero, Depravity Already in Progress. Because, again, we're just recycling the same six scenes. Now it's time for a party scene. Right, but then we also cut to a Bible study, which has three people sitting in folding chairs, as if the movie wants us to go, well, I don't know, this Bible study looks pretty stank nasty. Is that what they... (laughs) Yeah, so, and this is, I guess, guess Allie, the, the, the waitress girl, is getting texts from Sean, and I just want to point out, like, when we see her getting the call or whatever, her uh, phone screen has dancing on it because she's a dancer. (laughs) She's a dancing dancer. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Also, she never has sleeves and always has precisely one inch of cleavage. I think that's as much as you can get away with in the Christian movies. Anyway, so, yeah, but he calls all drunk and stoned to tell her she should come to this party or whatever. Right, and she acts like he's trapped under a 
car. Jack's like Lassie's barking something about how he's Sean's trapped in a well. <laughs> She's like, I have to go. I have to say, it's so clearly a drunk dial. Look, I know you're Christian and you're not used to the real world, but everyone knows what like, you should, you should come, you should come here. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Everybody shut up. You should come here. <laughs> yeah, something tells me that's not her first. So, and also like James the dork is, is hitting on her too, but Christian style. So he offers to drive her to pick up her drunk boyfriend. I'm like, this is begging to be punched. There, there's like no more clearly, I want you to punch me in the face than, well, would you like me to drive you to the party where you can pick up your drunk, angry boyfriend? Right. Oh, he, he wants to hold her hand so far, <laughs> wrist deep. <laughs> So they show up at the party, and I love, too, like the James character. He looks at the party. He just sees all the alcohol and hedonism, and he goes, are you sure? <laughs> and he, he's, he actually says, oh, God, guard your heart. Yep. I'll be praying for you. Those are the exact words. <laughs> Which means I'm going to jerk it in the car and cry while you're there. <laughs> just so everybody knows. I think everything he said really meant I'm going to jerk it in the car and cry. Everything that actor has ever said means I'm going (laughs) to jerk it in the car and cry. Hashtag jerk it in the car and cry. (laughs) The Eli Bosnick story. (laughs) So then she shows up at the door and uh, and Cameron answers the door. And I just want to point out that Cameron and Sean are wearing matching white Hanes undershirts like Team Douche. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> or something but at any rate so like Cameron comes to the door and he's like oh you must be the mysterious girl he kept, keeps talking about she wanders into the party and honestly like I guess she's too Christian to touch drunk people yeah she's like oh god they've they've got alcohol on their hands it's gonna yes. get me yes. <laughs> so yeah and then he yells at her because he has no acting skills so right that's shitty his couple emotion. fighting at a party the movie Oh, for fuck's like, sake. Like, this is a movie where you can't get up and be like, well, time to head home. Come on, who's riding with me? <laughs> I got five in my car. Six if we sit in laps. Come on, people. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, he yells that he doesn't need her help and he's fine without her and additional act three stuff. Right. Anyway. So yeah. she storms out and he tries to chase her car down using his six million dollar man powers that we didn't learn about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but, but no, it's not quite that. Uh, it's not quite going to work. So now he's going to ch- get in his car to chase her down, despite being well over the legal limit. Oh no! Right. And again, this is where we get the wonderful car crash, which is a car, a, a tree, a, a, a car again. There you go. You get it. <laughs> a sound. Yeah. And while he's doing, well, right before the, the wreck, we're getting more VO or whatever. And now he's doing, he's monologuing in that style of like, if you do not use contractions, even where it is silly not to, <laughs> you are profound. <laughs> and he crashes his car into a tree because... His own voiceover was distracting. <laughs> yes. He's basically no like, they're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. <laughs> so now he wakes up on the couch with a bag of ice on his neck. And, and, and I guess we're just supposed to have like flirty, fun conversation going on in the kitchen between Cameron and his girlfriend. Um, the, cause they're making pancakes together. But the line that we start is like, we could put ranch on the pancakes. And I just wrote, fuck this movie. Well, six you. minutes. Six minutes of this character vamping about like, oh, you sure? I think ranch would be pretty good. I got some strawberries. I got some bananas. Let's name all the fruits we can while this character <laughs> slowly walks into the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so bad. And he's like, what happened last night? And he goes like, oh, dude, you wrecked your car. And then he throws out the tee hee hee. That's funny. Ha 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 ha. That you would say that when it's obviously not true. Ha ha. Right. But you can't even tell that that's what he's doing because he's such a bad fucking actor. Yeah. Noah just did a much more realistic version <laughs> of that fake laugh than that kid does because he goes, ah, ha ha. You can't tell if he's having a nervous breakdown or laughing. Yeah. <laughs> And then they're like, no, really. And then he fake ass angry punches the wall too, you well, know? So. He's like, fuck you, Fridge. And he instantly comes calm and he's like, hey, man, will you give me a ride? And he's like, oh, <laughs> sure, yes. <yeah." laughs> so fucking. Laughing bad. without smiling and then you try to fuck my fridge? Absolutely. Let's get in yeah. a car together. You drive. <laughs> Let's get you the fuck away from my poor girlfriend. <laughs> um, so, but now where he's, where he needs a ride to, it's not to where his car is, it's not to the fucking impound or anything. 
it's to stalk his kind of girlfriend chick that went out with him twice at work. Right. That's that's where he next goes. The next scene is him showing up at work to to stalk the waitress. But she's literally just won't look at him. So he shows up and the other waitress is like, she doesn't want to talk to you. And he's like, oh, talk to her. She's like, I, <laughs> what? I, go away. And he's like, all right. <laughs> well, what what do we do now in the movie? <laughs> Well, he even says that. He's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I'm like, it's like the script has become sentient, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, 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 and so then we get like more broody music as he looks over things in a sad way. And at this point, I was laying bets that this kid actually wrote and performed this song. He didn't, but I was pretty sure he <laughs> yeah, did. Yeah, it was, it was pretty close. But this is also like, this is a weird moment of like, look, if I'm not going to pass college and never be told what to do or be a preacher i don't know what the fuck i'm gonna do with my life and it's like dude you have a million things you could do get a job do some shit start a podcast fuck yeah <laughs> right right well exactly exactly the stakes of this movie are literally any of the things that you could do go do them yeah exactly and here's the thing when i was this hypothetical character's age even though this actor is 45 when i was this <laughs> hypothetical character's age i assume 19 or 20 i was scooping rotten chocolate out from underneath the mats at fucking max brenner's in new york city from 4 a.m to 7 a.m to get myself through acting school and at no point was i as whiny as this entirely right. <laughs> trouble-free child is well, right. Like they, they try to, they, the kid doesn't even have a job. His parents are just putting money in a bank for him for fuck's sake. It's like, it's like even fewer problems than the average affluent white kid in college. <laughs> There's also an amazing moment in this montage where like he decides he does have to get a job and he's just searching for janitor jobs. Like the only things that were available to him were preacher. Past college and impressed <laughs> black professor or janitor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. He's on, he's on Craigslist. And by the way, if you're willing to abandon absolute morality, that site has much better paying work than janitors. <laughs> yeah, right. It's true. <laughs> pay Come on, Sean. But see, that's the thing. For this arrogant fucking jackass pretentious kid who wrote this fucking movie, being a janitor is rock bottom. Right. You know, this was the giving hand jobs for crack of this movie. <laughs> we actually get to see him mopping the floor all sadly at one point. And I was just hoping so bad he would start, like, solving advanced English equations <laughs> on a chalkboard or something. <laughs> what does no. your life mean? Nothing. Who did it? Who <laughs> did it? Also, there's an incredible moment. They, like, run out of janitor stuff. They show him sweeping and carrying out trash. But then there's also time where he's just wiping down a sink. But it's not dramatic enough, so he's looking at it like it was covered in cum. He's like, ah, <laughs> right. from the top to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and as if we hadn't gotten enough of this creepy stalking shit, in the next scene, we are now going to get Allie coming home and him just sitting on her step waiting for her when she gets there. Holding a boom box over his head. <laughs> Baby, go <come> back. <laughs> uh. And she's with James. And this is what's so, again, I love how badly they treat James in this movie. She, he's like, oh, I didn't realize you were with someone. Hey, James, you still doing your faggy little Christian group? And James is like, oh, man, when I, our fight scene later on where I, <laughs> that's okay. I'll go over there. You guys want some sodas or something from Kraft? <laughs> I'll be jerking off in the car. Yeah, and she boots him, too, because she's like, you know, he shows up and, and, and James is like, hey, that's kind of creepy. This guy, like, waiting at your door that you told you didn't want to talk to him. Do you want me to, like, hang around or inform the police? And she's like, no, go away. It's like, oh, OK, I will do. I'll do He's the that. shut the fuck up Tina of this movie. <laughs> <Isn't he? laughs> I haven't tried it, but try shouting shut the fuck up, James. See how it works. <laughs> Report back. <laughs> and of course, and, and, and also, OK, so nothing about this movie is discussed at this point. Right. Like, I mean, they have their own, their issues, I guess, or whatever that this couple does or whatever, but they don't talk about that. Instead, she's like, you know, for the first time in my life, I'm happy because I'm a Christian now. And he's like, oh, well, you found Jesus. And she's like, no, Jesus found me. And it's like, what the fuck are you people talking about? That's not what this movie's been about up until now. It really is. It's the fucking Meisner exercise of movies. It's like, I have found Jesus. You have found Jesus. I have found Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop. 
Someone kill a baby. <laughs> <laughs> he also says in this movie, he's like, you know, even Jesus wouldn't forgive me. And I wrote in my fucking notes, every third character in a Christian movie. Also, nobody ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's never the thing that's holding us back, folks. Yeah. Anyway, so meanwhile, cut to Cameron verbally abusing the black chick. We got all kinds of shitty couples fighting here at Dave's <laughs> Shitty Couples Fighting the Movie. We got your black and white couples. We got your white and white couples. We got invisible couples that apparently abandon their child when they're three. Come on down. We got all kinds of <laughs> shitty couples fighting. Yeah, so I guess the the uh, the black girl has caught him cheating, and now they're breaking up, and she smacks him. Oh, that was fun. Rew oh, rewound yes. that a few times, too. Yeah. It was pretty great. Punches Ray-Bans right in the face. She leaves, and he he's, like, mad at her. And this is where Sean turns to Cameron and goes, you know, we're all sick, and Jesus is the cure. And I just wrote, note to self, lyrics for Christian rock band. We're all sick, and Jesus is the cure. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I also love, as she's leaving, you know, he sh has to shout something out after her. And this is the actual line that, that Cameron shouts out. He goes, Thank God, I'm tired of your incessant talking anyway. And I just wrote what people say when they're angry. <laughs> just like that. I, I I wanted him so bad to tell her to get the H out of here, but he didn't. You know what? Just get the H out of here. I'm effing sick of this, okay? You see. You see. <laughs> VU. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's, just, it's just really a letter. bad. There's words with V. You don't know. <laughs> Those are new ones. Look on Urban Dictionary. Um. So and and then so I guess like now that Sean has had to like get kicked out of his apartment on the one day eviction notice, um, he's been couch surfing with Cameron, and now the two of them are gonna have a fucking conversation that I have no goddamn idea what was supposed to be about because ultimately what you've got is Sean going, I'm gonna move back in with my parents, I think, and Cameron goes. Dude, you finally have nobody trying to help you, and you want to screw that up? <laughs> Actual line! Yeah. yeah. Cameron's, like, a, trying to convince Radiohead not to sell out. He's like, seriously, man? Seriously, I remember when it was just you guys, like, uh, 20 people in that bar. And now you're just fucking everywhere. <laughs> and definitely don't move back in with your parents. That's... Stupid. George Costanza did that. It did not work Well, out. yeah, right. Exactly, and if, exactly. If you need some community support or whatever, try, try out Sunday Assembly. Cut, cut. No improvising. No improvising. I mean, there's nowhere out there for you except your home with your parents. That's the real cool thing. Arms crossed across chest. <laughs> well, also, what was Cameron's point here, okay? Because like Cameron's going like, well, if you want to move in with your parents, that's fine. But I'm not moving back in with your parents. Or what? I mean, what was <laughs> that's really the conversation. <laughs> I don't. I I have no idea what Cameron's point in this conversation was supposed to be. It's like you know he's like I'm gonna move back in with my parents. He's like you know that's not a choice for me. It's like yeah I know I didn't say you were gonna do it though. I said I was. Gonna do you want to rewind? You guys want to rewind? Start uh, again? I don't know, man. Maybe you should have like put some punctuation in the script or, you know, <laughs> written in character names. This is really hard. <laughs> Stream of consciousness. Whatever it was that they were fighting about is enough to make Cameron kick him off the couch. So now he's completely homeless. Yeah. Sleeping on a park bench. And we also get shots of her like looking at a cross necklace. Yeah, well, oh, and we're going to eventually learn this, but apparently he snuck and in, broke into her dance studio and hung this cross necklace up as a gift for her. I missed that entirely. I thought they, she just bought herself a cross necklace. I had no idea why we I were looking. I thought looking. she still had the one that she stole when she was a kid. <laughs> um, but no, eventually she says, like, later on in the movie, like, oh, uh, you gave me that cross necklace. That was really nice of you or whatever. And I'm like, oh, Boy, you really should have like made that clear in the moment. But yeah, that's what's supposed to be happening puzzle. here. Yeah, exactly. I figured out memento easier. There's so little happening in this movie. We really shouldn't have to like we really shouldn't have to dig. But yeah, yeah. So and and also they they show him like cuz he's got his like his half box of belongings that he's carrying around with him. Yeah, like he, like he got fired at work and everything he owns is one little cardboard box. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. I believe you have my stapler. <laughs> I believe you have my prapler. So, <laughs> oh, that's bad. Um, so, but then I guess, but he's supposed to be, it's, it's so rock bottom now that he slept on a park bench. 
and it shows him laying down on this park bench and then it shows him waking up or getting up because he could not possibly look less like he just slept on a fucking bench. Yeah. Oh. He's going to have lines on his face. Yeah, we also get a, uh, a Victor Hugo quote here. Oh, right. He's doing another voiceover. And he says, Victor Hugo once said, to rise from error to truth is rare and beautiful. But what he left out was that's not easy. It hurts. That's what he said. To rise from the ashes involves destroying a part of who you were. So, like, what a great accidental quote about how hard it is to leave a religion you get brainwashed <laughs> from childhood. I was yeah. just thinking to myself, yeah, man, you do have improvements to Victor Hugo's writing. What's you that? do. <laughs> <laughs> you tell us what he meant. <laughs> Please mansplain Victor Hugo to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so painful. So, all right. So now, just as you forgot that Kevin Sorbo was in this movie, he shows back, or we show back up at his church. Right. And he's going rogue. He comes up to the pew and he's <laughs> yes. like, look, this morning I had a plan. I had a whole fucking thing I was going to tell you. And then he takes the cue cards and he tears them in half and he says, but nope, tonight, someone give me a job and a location. Come on. <laughs> I really thought he was going to say I'm not going to use that sermon today Today I'm going to rap And he just puts a hat on his head backwards. <laughs> Cameron pops up behind him <laughs> Shit. Yeah but instead It's like no I was going to do this sermon About Jesus but instead I'm going to talk about the conclusion Of this movie rip 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 Yeah, I'm totally like the dad In Luke 15 right right <laughs> Right <laughs> Tied it together he also has this crazy moment where he's like, look, there's a lot of people who will say that God is angry. Don't read his book. But if just, <laughs> I'm telling you, God's too big, like too what? big, like you can't even fit it in your mouth. That's how big God is. This complaints, is why I write literally my complaints. Down. This is why I run them by my wife. <laughs> God wants your face. Oh. <laughs> he just starts doing movie quotes. <laughs> we need 16 minutes with K Sorbs. Um, so and and but but like what the movie is saying, and I love this too because apparently it thinks it was being clever this whole time. It's going like, you see, you're like God's prodigal son, and you need to come back again. It's like, yes, that's what the analogy was about in the Bible. Yeah, like you can't start with the fucking thing and then make an analogy about, it and then make a movie about of the, the 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 analogy and surprise us with the thing it was <laughs> analogous to. Yeah, this is like a movie called Peekaboo, where at the end they're like Peekaboo, huh? <laughs> Turns out daddy wasn't gone behind his hands forever after all. The title was Peekaboo the whole time. <laughs> I love too that during this sermon they cut to this kid in the uh in, in the pews that is clearly bored out of his fucking mind. He's like hitting his head against the pew to try to drive himself unconscious so he doesn't have to sit through any more of this shit. <laughs> Like, I love it. You can't find one second of someone looking interesting. But anyway, yeah, God is just like Kay Sorbs. He wishes you would come home. That's that's the message. And apparently now that that they, he he sermons about as fast as he eats dinner, because 81 seconds after the sermon begins, it's over. We cut to people leaving the church. You know, they're going like, hey, man, I appreciate you keeping the sermon quicker than married sex. But uh, I didn't want to. <laughs> Spend all fucking day here. And then Sean shows up at the end and drops his boxes and coat like it's the end of an officer and a gentleman. Dad's, <laughs> Kevin Sorbo's going to pick him up. He's going to put a captain's hat on, hit carry through a Chinese factory. <laughs> oh, shit. And I love, too, that, like, you know, they, 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 the dad comes to hug him and he's like, Dad, you wouldn't be happy to see me if you knew about that. And he's like, nope. He's like, Jesus, he forgives you. <laughs> He forgives you. He's like, I would, I, but I wanted so much for him to say how much gay sex I had, you know. And then he just slowly <laughs> steps back. Hose me. Hose me. <laughs> Hose me. We're pretty sure we can fuck over our kids for this kind of thing. He's <laughs> like, no, I'm not doing the prodigal son thing. I'm just back for the weekend. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Still atheist and gay. And I love to, okay, so like, and, and this is what I thought was going to be the closing fucking line. I thought the goddamn movie was over at this point when he comes back to his dad, but no. But he says, he's like, but because of redemption through supernatural forgiveness, I have a second chance. I'm like, no, because your parents have money. You have a second, <laughs> you selfish son of a bitch. Yeah. 
But apparently there's still a movie. We, we, we haven't earned our way out of this one yet because apparently we got to see him all cleaned up and tie up that loose end with Allie. So now he shows up at Bible study to yell at Allie in front of a group of people that should restrain him. And again, it's an incredible moment because he walks in and James is like, hey, Sean. And he's like, fuck you, James. You shut the fuck up. And James is like, <laughs> OK. And then he's just basically like, you complete me. You had me in sparkling grape juice. I want her face off. And <laughs> Well, he might as well, because he totally forgets his lines in this scene, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's supposed to be like the big, you know, burst in grand gesture speech. And he's just like, I want to make a grand gesture. <laughs> I guess that was it. <laughs> okay, bye. It, it's literally, it's 10 seconds. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be here making a fool of myself, which I obviously am doing. More lines will be written at a later point. <laughs> Note to self, don't forget to write this. You're killing this. You're killing this, Sean. How does a good writer write a grand gesture burst? In his yes. Speech? Voice over. Might as well have been saying that on the way in. And then I guess Allie forgives him and finds his overacting charming. So James will still never get to have naked time. Mm. Goes out into the car to beat off, I guess. So, yeah, so then she goes with him to his, like, welcome back to the family party. And it's, like, as soon as they show this party scene, I'm like, Kurt Cameron's going to start dancing any second now, isn't he? <laughs> there are several children at his birthday party, apparently. <laughs> it's kind of creepy, yeah. He comes in and Kevin Sorbo's like, a toast to my product, I mean, my son, John. <laughs> I sure hope there was a rest to this movie. He found his way all the way to the credits. Hooray. <laughs> And then there are stupid words and Allie and him walking through a park and then more Dear Diary bullshit. Yeah. And then he finishes the English assignment. Isn't he expelled? Right. <laughs> Does this matter anymore? No. <laughs> I would have loved if the movie just ended right after he got expelled. He's like, I guess I don't have to write this shit anymore. And the movie just ends. This is the perfect <laughs> ending. He shoots the professor and he's like, it's just been revoked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's telling the fucking story. It can happen however he wants it at this point. So obviously this movie didn't deserve stars, but I don't even feel like it deserved clever analogies. So instead of our typical close, I want to finish this one up by asking you to tell me how bad this movie is again. But just to make it a challenge, I want you to do it in the style of a bad introspective 10th grade composition. Dear Diary, the definition of incompetence is defined by Webster's as confessions of a prodigal son <laughs> anna and no Dar i did the dishes last well i did well like because i had a recording because i had a record no everyone stay on the line listen to this i had a recording and you said well no i because i will get it i'm not yelling at you i'm trying to speak loud enough so you can hear me because you're in the other room if you come into this room we can have the com i'm not yeah darling i'm not yelling at you i'm trying to explain we can talk. I'm not. I'm not negating your emotions. I'm trying to communicate. You tell me what the best way to communicate in this. Everyone, don't you stop listening to the podcast? I got 45 more minutes of this. Yes, no shit. That for 90 minutes. Folks. <laughs> All right. Um, bad introspective 10th grade composition. Yes. Um, uh, beginnings never really begin, and endings never really end. Words are love. The aesthetic value of an artwork is in some ways always relative. To wit, what may be hackneyed tripe to one observer might be the beau ideal to another. <laughs> Thesaurus. <laughs> Syncope. <laughs> Nonetheless, this movie is what Webster's Dictionary defines as god-fucking-awful. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. And while that does it for our review of Confessions of a Prodigal Son, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to coax you back for more. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? Well, we're going to be traveling, and whenever we travel, you know there's a treat that we give the listeners, which means it's time for Wicked Vultures. Yes. Vultures of Horror 3. Part mm -hmm. Trey. Yeah, mm -hmm. and i got to say, mm -hmm. I, <laughs> yeah, the well, we just going in. <laughs> Now, I have to say, because we're kind of doing this on a short-term rest, it's going to be a bit of a shorter episode than usual. Um, but I want to say, I've actually already seen this movie. I don't want to spoil it or anything, but nothing happens. It would be impossible to spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> but nothing does happen in a rather spectacular way, so I'll at least give you that. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, if you consider yourself forewarned, uh, the show next week will be a little bit shorter than usual as we ramp up for our live show. So if you normally use this show to fill up your Tuesday commute, you're going to have to drive really fucking fast next Tuesday. All Do right? it. I'm in your car. <laughs> <laughs> So with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode 60 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written in Performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Sean went on to be a terrible writer with no inheritance money. He now lives in the crawl space above his rich brother's garage. James spent the next several years having sex with a handful of Allie's used Kleenex. His neighborhood has far fewer stray cats than it used to. <laughs> Sean prayed the gay way after all. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2016. All rights reserved.